Welcome back to Vintage Diecast Restoration. Uh, this is another installment of the little mini series I talked about wanting to do called Tool Time. So up this week, I wanted to talk about these. This is the uh, set of dental picks. Um, I have a link for this particular set down in the description. Um, I ordered this off of Amazon. It comes in this nice little case that folds up and uh, each of these can tuck underneath the um, little elastic band that's in there. Um, I've liked these a lot. When, uh, when I'm doing cleanings on castings, if I need to be able to really get down in sight of uh, some of those really tight areas, those little hard to reach spots, these work really, really well. Um, they also are fairly affordable. Um, most of the tools that I use are uh, inexpensive. I think, you know, if you wanted to get into doing restorations, you could get a basic set of tools for probably under a hundred bucks. Um, some of the more specialized tools that I have, I may have paid a little more than that for, but for the most part, you can get the basics out of the way pretty inexpensive, and this is one thing that I would definitely recommend uh, getting. So the only complaint I've had about these sets are the tips. You can see, see how my tip bends out a little bit? Um, this was not originally like this, and quite a few of these picks in this set um, I've had bend on me. So this is not a bad set. It does a decent job and I still use it quite a bit. Um, but one of the recommendations that I've made previously is uh, to go talk to your dentist. Um, these are not professional. These are, are made for hobbyists. They're made for um, people who are tinkering, doing stuff like what I'm doing. And so from that respect, they are great. But the metal on the ends is soft. I went to my dentist last week, and uh, in addition to getting a new uh, scrubbing toothbrush for cleaning, I asked my hygienist what they did with their old tools. And she said, oh, you know, we're required by law to replace them at least once a year. And I said, well, what do you do with the old ones? She said, oh, we actually have to pay someone to haul them off. Um, and I said, well, do you have any old ones that I could have? And so she went through her set, and these are still in the plastic because they were sterilized, so these have not been used or they haven't been in somebody's mouth since they were sterilized. And she got me a set of professional dental picks. So these you can see um, are a much stiffer metal, much higher quality, um, and these should last me quite a bit longer. Um, and I didn't have to pay a dime for them. They said, uh, you know, this is an older set, and they said, you know, we cycle them out <coughs> periodically, and so uh, they were willing to just give me one of these. So um, it is important to kind of think out of the box with what you're using for different restorations, um, what might be good tools. Another thing I wanted to talk about kind of briefly in this tool time is uh, some of the other things that I use for cleanup. So in addition to my picks, which I love and are great for getting into all of these little tight areas, these little hard to reach spots and to maintain the details in the castings. You know, one of the things that makes Matchbox kind of sit apart from Hot Wheels and a lot of the other die cast was their attention to detail. The castings in these had all these little lines and the grills and you know you could see the door handles and the marker lights and all those different little pieces and when you do a restoration it's really easy to get the paint too thick and to have those start to go away. So um, you know it's kind of unique I guess to restoring Matchbox uh, wanting to preserve all those little details in the castings and work around those. Um, I just posted a video of the motorbike restoration. And uh, when I was doing the little Honda, 
um, I use the hell out of these picks because all those tight little nooks and crannies, um, trying to get down in and preserve all the casting details, but get all of that original paint out. Um, it really, really was a challenge. So uh, excited to get the new set of picks. And as you can see, this this doesn't bend at all. This is uh, nice and sharp on the end and works really good for clearing stuff out. So um, think about that. On the larger areas where I don't have little details, um, one of my favorite tools to use are just emery boards. Um, I get these in a pack of, I think it's 10 or 12, um, usually from like a Walgreens or CVS. Uh, any drugstore should have them. They're cheap, you know, these are made for uh, filing the edges of your fingernails. Um, my nails don't look nearly as pretty as Marty's, but uh, that's because I use my emery boards on my models and not on my nails. Um, and so these, these work really well for all the flat areas of the models. Um, the other thing I like about these is if you have a, say a hard to reach area, you know, like I can't get down inside of the window on this model, these can be cut. So, and as inexpensive as they are, I don't care if I cut one up or have to uh, modify one to get it to fit. When I'm done with this model, I'm throwing this in the trash. So. Um, these are really nice for getting into some of those harder to reach areas, areas where um, I've got a flat surface and I want to maintain that flat surface. And so those are my two tool tips for uh, this episode of Tool Time. As always, if you enjoyed this, click that like button below. Uh, don't forget to comment and uh, subscribe to keep up with all of our future videos. Thanks so much for joining me on this edition of Tool Time.